Hey everybody, it's time for another Cubit coffee break. My coffee choice of the day is a sugar-free vanilla triple latte made with Ugandan blend. Uh, I don't know, it's a little bitter for me. Gary, what's your coffee choice of the day? <laughs> Damn, that's impressive. Um, I have coffee in a Yeti. Um, I got it fresh out of uh, my Keurig, and this is Green Mountain Hazelnut. So it's kind of embarrassing, you've put me to shame, but I will tell you this keeps me going throughout the day, and I needed this break, Dan. No, no, I have I have Keurig hazelnut in my cabinet, so I, I love that too. My wife loves it a lot. But uh, hey, I'm excited to have Gary Corgan, uh, the Cubit Senior VP of Sales and Account Management, with us today. Gary's been leading our sales and account management at Cubit here for the last 11 years, and and our journey into XP&A or our extended planning and analysis. Gary and I go back a lot farther than 11 years. In fact, one of the first times that we went out on a sales call together, we took the train out to uh, Long Island to visit a prospect. And, and I was just looking at the ducks on the water going, man, there are a lot of ducks out here. I'd like to go hunting out here. <laughs> Yeah, I, basically, I was on the, I was sitting next to you thinking they look, uh, they look cute, you know, uh, or or tasty potentially, and you're sitting there thinking I just want to kill them all, yeah. You know? So <laughs> Dan is our resident hunter here at Cubit, and uh, it fascinates me day in and day out. <laughs> yeah, Gary's looking at me, you're like, man, we we should be getting ready for this call. I'm like, man, yeah, but look at all those ducks. <laughs> So, yeah, I think we were like slightly late for the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, hey, Gary, thanks for joining today. So uh, technology and process change decisions are hard. There's plenty of risk involved in those kind of decisions. So Gary's going to take us through some considerations on how to select the optimal platform for your xp a journey. So Gary, take it away. Dan, again, thanks for having me on the coffee break. I've been doing this a long time. You and I have gone back many, many years, and things have changed about how, how folks find and select the you know, various technologies to meet their business requirements. And today we're talking about XP&A. Some pretty obvious things, you know, it's really important to devi- define your scope up front for whatever you're trying to solve for. You know, is it trying to get out of spreadsheets? Is it we're trying to replace a system that's not working? It really important to define your requirements and think about that up front as well. And then also define your your timelines. You know, what do we when do we need this implemented by to make sure we we give ourselves enough time to not only evaluate, but then to implement on time so that we can ex- accept the solution and and have it up and running by the by the by the deadlines. It's really important to, to find the right solutions. It's oftentimes one of the most difficult things is to figure out, well, what solutions should I be evaluating? One thing that I would just encourage anyone to do is do your research. Avoid just going right to a Gartner or one of the analysts and picking the, whatever's in the magic quadrant. I can tell you over the years, I've witnessed many, many times someone just saying, hey, we just want to look at the four or five vendors in the upper right-hand corner of that magic quadrant. And they chose a solution that was not the right fit. You know, the, the analysts don't always evaluate all the things that are most important to your projects, okay? And that's ultimately what this is about. Um, and defining an evaluation process is, is really, really key and, and a good evaluation process. So this just illustrates that there are lots of different kinds of projects you can do when you're looking at XP&A um, and solving that corporate planning puzzle. It's important to pick where you want to start. You don't have to do all this up front. We, we practitioners love to take on big projects, right? But at the end of the day, what's most important is that we pick one where you get your first win, you get you adopt the solution, and then you go from there. One of the things that I think is so important about evaluating software is making sure that you ask the vendors to really dig under the covers and, and maybe even provide some of your own data to do a proof of concept demo. It's really hard to evaluate technology by just doing demos. You've seen that time and time again. Everyone has a great demo. What I find most interesting about this is that it kind of lays out a roadmap and these puzzle pieces plug into each other, right? So, hey, if you start with demand planning, that's going to link over to merchandise if you're a you know a distributor or a retailer. It's going to link over to operations and ultimately over to finance. So this kind of gives you a good thumbnail of where do I start? How does this stuff connect? And underpinning all that, as you can see in the purple down below, is data. I can't stress enough how important it is. You just talked about data. It's really important that you that you look at how these whatever system you're going to look at, whatever tools, XBNA tools. It's really important that you are uh, you're looking at how they ingest data, right? Because some of the solutions are really good at going and getting data and bringing them yeah. in at scale. Other ones, you're going to have to maybe buy a third party sort of uh, ETL tool, okay? Scale, I can't stress it enough. De- depending on the size of your organization, 
it's really important in your evaluation that you ask vendors to bring in a large amount of data, maybe your own data, see how it how it interacts with that data, see whether you see the hourglass or whether you don't. Some of them handle scale very well, other ones very poorly. So you have to think about, are we gonna bring a lot of data into this system or not? Can we run allocations and scenarios against uh, against this? Flexibility is also important. Are you an Excel shop, a Google shop, uh, Google Sheets? Um, or do you wanna live in the web? Um, on a web interface? Do you want them to live su su simultaneously, symbiotically next to each other? Um, so that flexibility is really key and you wanna be thinking about that. Uh, dimensionality is a huge one. Uh, depending on what you're trying to solve for, do you need more than seven, eight dimensions in a cube? Might you need a lot more? Some, some solutions will handle that well, others won't. We talked earlier about demand planning. It's really important to understand whatever solution you're buying, when you're ready to infuse machine learning and predictive in that technology, how's that gonna work? And then last but not least, really important is the, the reporting. Every XBNA solution needs to be able to provide good solid management reporting. And, and the question is, do you need to export data out of that system and put it in another BI tool or can it handle it on its own? Can you distribute reports easily out to the masses? How do people get access to information? And, and, and do reporting. So, so these are some of the things that I think you really want to focus on. And the best way to evaluate is to do a proof of concept. If you do these things, I think you'll end up really happy with a really good solution because this is a big investment that you're going to be using for many years to come. Also, make sure that you evaluate whoever's going to implement that solution, whether it be a partner of the vendor that you're looking at or whether it be that vendor, make sure that you get a strong you know, implementation quote and proposal and you understand how that particular partner is going to implement it because you know it's one thing to buy good technology by the right it's another to implement it right so that's yeah. also an important part of your evaluation because that partner is going to be extremely important to your success yeah dan that's all i had i you can try to keep it as quick and, and, and as concise as possible fantastic hey that's great great i appreciate it uh gary thanks thanks for that and great having you on had to love to have you back uh um, just like to add that, you know, according to Gartner, uh, by 2024, 70% of new FPNA or financial planning analysis projects will become extended planning and analysis projects. So plan now. We're here to to for one on one sessions. In fact, if you'd like if you find this topic interesting and you'd like to schedule a one on one 15 minute coffee break focused on your business and the challenges that you face, contact me uh, either at dbarrett@cubit.com or through LinkedIn Messenger. And we'll send you a $20 uh, Starbucks gift card and schedule a time that's convenient for you, Gary and I, or uh, other or people in our organization be glad to speak to you about your journey in XPNA. So thank you very much. And I look forward to our next session. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Dan.